everybody. This is Mark Basher. I'm a manufacturing specialist with Go Engineering. Uh, welcome to today's webinar where we're going to be highlighting applications for Stratasys 3D printers in performance and automotive racing. Um, so, you know, here uh, obviously we're representing Go Engineer, and I just kind of want to talk a little bit about who Go Engineer is and what we do. Um, the obvious connection to this printing is, is we um, support and sell the full line of Stratasys 3D printing solutions. Um, this is FDM systems, Polyjet systems, and uh, anything else that uh, Stratasys offers. Um, as a whole, we have a whole host of other products. Um, we also sell SolidWorks, CamWorks, um, Altium, some PLM solutions. Go Engineer has about 30 years uh, in this industry space, facilitating both uh, designers and manufacturers and uh, thousands of customers across you know, every industry you could think of that designs, develops, or manufactures a certain product. Um, our goal is to help jumpstart customers and lower the cost, risk, and time to go live with, uh, with certain technologies. And we're located across the western United States from Louisiana all the way up to Washington. And we have over 20 different uh, customer training facilities and uh, demo rooms scattered throughout that uh, geographic region. Um, historically, the um, design and development process has been very long and drawn out, and as a whole, um, our goal with the products that we sell here at Go Engineer is to really compress this overall development process and uh, allow parallel developments to happen. So we're conceptualizing and design at the same time we're working on validation and documentation and getting us to uh, manufacturing ultimately as quickly as possible. And the goal is also to uh, increase product quality along the way. Um, bringing this up, I just want to you know point out that we are not just a company that sells you know CAD design software and 3D printers, but we really have a whole host of related goods and services associated with these different products that we offer. Um, these can be you know um, different uh, tools, analysis tools. Um, we offer 3D printing and scanners. Um, some ERP solutions, um, giving everyone you need, you know, the products, the, the products that engineers, designers, and manufacturers need to bring these products to market quicker. Um, so just kind of zooming out, looking at our uh, mission statement here at Go Engineer, we provide and uh, design and manufacturing tools with expertise that enables customers to reduce cost, risk, and time required to go live with new technologies and ultimately make new product introductions. Um, so today in this webinar, and I apologize if this is going to be repetitive, but I want to kind of highlight the two Stratasys 3D printing technologies, and then we're going to look at how those are being used in the uh, racing industry. Um, so first, it's pertinent to know that you know one of two Stratasys's core printing technologies is what's known as Polyjet. Um, with Polyjet, we're using inkjet-style print heads to jet down a liquid photopolymer resin. That's then chased by a UV light, which uh, allows that to cure. Um, the unique advantages to Polyjet are the fact that we can print with up to six different base materials at one time. This allows us to do full color 3D printing and as well as uh, mixing of mechanical properties so we can do, you know, simulate overmolded products and things like that. Um, the, you know, we can see some of the pictures at the bottom. We see we got the full color. We have rubberized um, components in there. And in the bottom right hand we see kind of the the lineup of Polyjet systems, starting with the uh, Eden Connex on the bottom left, moving to the Stratasys J750, and the Object 1000 at the right, which boasts a full meter cube build envelope. Um, Polyjet components are, are great for high product realism, um, but usually they leave a little bit more to be desired when it comes to uh, mechanical properties. So for that reason, we say that these are generally not ideal for functional uses. Um, they're great for concept ideation and, and fit form testing. Um, Stratasys's solution when it comes to the high functionality um, you know, realm really lies with their FDM um, printing process. FDM is fused deposition modeling. Um, this is a process where we have real engineering grade thermoplastics. Um, we're actually extruding these out. So if you look at the schematic in the top right, um, we'll, we feed this filament through a series of drive wheels into a liquefier, and then we extrude that out of a tip, uh, very similar fashion to a hot glue gun, uh, on the uh, or where it comes out right there. 
Um, so the suitable applications for this due to its high functionality is um, you know, functional prototypes, actual end-use parts, and then tooling to, uh, to produce end-use parts. This is the most common form of AM. Um, this is um, similar in process to you know, the FFF and a lot of the hobbyist systems employ the same printing technology. Um, but there are some limitations that those systems don't have, like heated build chambers and, and these really high-end, uh, um, highly tuned materials for, uh, for app various applications. Uh, on the bottom right here, we see the full line of Stratasys FDM printers, um, starting with the F123 series on the left. Then we see the Fortis 380 and 450 and the 900MC on the bottom right. Uh, the 900MC does a 3 foot by 2 foot by 3 foot build envelope. Um, so looking at some of the probably most relevant and useful to the racing industry um, is the Ultem 1010. Um, this is available on all of the high-end Fortis systems, so the 400, 450, and 900MC. This is a thermoplastic that's polyetheriumide based. Um, it's got excellent strength and performance at elevated temperatures. So here we see it's got a heat deflection temperature of 216 degrees C. That's about 420 degrees F. Um, so very, very high temperature stuff. Makes it great for composite layup tools. Um, some applications for air intakes due to its chemical resistance. Um, so we're going to see quite a few examples of this throughout the presentation today. Um, next, we're going to talk about the Ultem 9085. Um, so this was the first formulation of Ultem that was available on the uh, in Stratasys' FDM platform. Um, this is available, again, on the full uh, Fortis line, for, for 400, 450, and 900MC. Um, the particular difference to this over the 1010 is the 1010 does have a higher um, heat deflection temperature and is great for high temperature applications. Um, this Ultem 9085 has a very high impact strength, and it's also got a V0 flame rating, which means uh, it won't self-combust or burn or release uh, any sort of toxic smoke or anything like that, which uh, makes it great for um, end-use parts and bracketry and various interior paneling um, applications. This material is available in the tan that you see on the screen and also a black variation. Um, next, this is probably the most, uh, the, the newest FDM material that Stratasys has released that has lots of implications for the performance and racing industry. This is the Nylon 12 CF. That's a carbon-filled variant of the Nylon 12 material. It's available right now only on the Fortis 450MC, although in the upcoming quarter or two, I expect it to be released on the uh, 900, which is the largest uh, FDM system. This is, again, it's... Um, got excellent strength and performance at elevated temperatures, and it's got the highest stiffness to weight ratio available of all the FDM thermoplastics. So this stuff is very, very stiff and makes it good for um, certain bracketry type applications. Here we see some, uh, some mounts that they use to string together a set of coil packs. Um, here we see a drill guide for a composite application, and here we see a mock-up of a uh, clutch assembly. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend it for brakes or critical components, but it's uh, definitely suitable for something like a clutch. Um, lastly is the ASA material. ASA is really an ABS-based thermoplastic. It's available on the full line of uh, Fortis printers. It's available in up to 10 different colors like we see up there. Um, ASA has a great surface finish and it's UV resistant, which makes it um, kind of good for aesthetic applications. Uh, it also has the capability to go extra sparse as compared to ABS or some of the other thermoplastics that can print on Stratasys systems. And the ability for it to go extra sparse is what makes it a great thing for uh, um, surrogate parts. So say if we don't have a production component yet and we're trying to, you know, mock up a vehicle and we want to, you know, something as a placeholder, it's a great application for that. And lastly is the ST-130 material. Um, so this is the brown material that you see on the screen there. And this is a sacrificial material that is used in composite layup applications where we have a mandrel that's going to be sacrificed or dissolved out at the end of the process. So um, here we kind of see three or two examples of the as-printed ST-130. 
uh, the finished tool with the raw cured uh, red, um, composite on top. And then lastly, we see the tool after the sacrificial mandrel has been dissolved out from the inside. Um, so let's talk about some of the characteristics of the high-performance racing industry. Um, this is an industry where 10 would be considered high volume. Um, very, very short lead times are required as, you know, we're quickly iterating and we need to have things ready on race day. Um, this is an industry uh, where each part is tends to be very, very high value. Um, weight reduction is always a top consideration. And the most important aspect of racing, I think, when you look at it, that where it differs from traditional manufacturing is that the competitive edge on race day is priceless. I mean, what what is a you know what is a company willing to spend to have a competitive edge that's going to you know win the Indy 500? This is something that's millions and millions of dollars, and and generally it's no expenses spared when it comes to you know having that competitive edge or producing a tool that's going to be able to get you that part that's going to get you to the uh, victory circle on uh, on race day. So diving right into some of the content, um, the first example we have here is going to come from uh, McLaren. Um, here we see the uh, rear wing main plane. This is on the back, so this is a feature that, uh, if you notice, it kind of looks like an upside down aircraft wing airfoil. And what that does is actually, when at speed, it causes a significant amount of downforce that helps the race car get enough traction and uh, for high-speed turns. Um, looking at this part, uh, and it blows my mind how quickly they were able to do this. They took this from concept to, um, you know, on the race vehicle on race day within one week's time. Um, so here we see the concept, the design of the main plane. Um, here we see actually the tool they printed. And pay attention in this tool, you see this dark black line running around the, uh, the perimeter there. What that is is actually a trim line. So they kind of create a little offset surface in the body of the tool itself. So that way, after the layup is done, they have a nice clean line on which to trim this component. Um, and then this tool was also two-sided. So you see there's a left and a right-hand portion to this main plane. Um, so they're able to incorporate the entire um, you know, layup geometry for this tool onto a single portion and do the left and right-hand side in one curing cycle. Um, so we see the tool that's as it's finished there, ready to be laid up on. The components actually out of the tool, trimmed, and here we see them ready for uh, for graphics and uh, installing to the race car. So again, this took them seven days from the um, design studio in the UK where McLaren's headquarters is, um, and they had a track side ready for practice on the 5th of April. So seven-day turnaround on that. This was another project that uh, McLaren, uh, McLaren used Stratasys printers for. Um, so here we see on the left-hand side a design of the steering wheel. Uh, and then on the right-hand side we see the, um, the actual as-printed version of that. So this kind of helped them get real-time feedback from the drivers. Uh, and also gave them an opportunity to you know, allow the driver to familiarize himself with the controls and the layout. So that way there's no surprises when they get into this uh, race car with this newly configured steering wheel for the first time. Um, and this was a quote from uh, Neil Oatley, the Design and Development Director at McLaren Racing. The faster we can bring new ideas and upgrades to the circuit, the more competitive we'll be. So this goes back to that same, you know, a competitive advantage is really priceless in this industry. Um, this next round of examples is going to come from Team Penske. Uh, Team Penske, it was, we see they've been doing this for quite some time, and by their own admission, they've learned many, many things along the way. Um, I like this example in the top left. Here we see a printed sacrificial core that was done out of a, um, it's actually just a soluble support material for our ASA printers. And they tried to do a layup on that for their first time, and they ended up cooking it in the, autoclave, so here we see the collapsed version of this uh, this reservoir they were trying to build. Um, so this is where ST-130 creates a, a great follow-up solution because of its higher heat deflection temperature. It can actually withstand the, uh, the curing cycle without um, losing its structural integrity. 
And here we see a finish layup tool, an Ultem 10 tool for a duct they used on an air intake. And we see the finish ducting there as it uh, kind of wraps through an engine bay. Uh, this example, these are some additional layup tools. Uh, along the top, we're looking at the, um, the head and neck extension or the Hans device extension. So last minute, um, the Indy Racing League put a change where they needed to have, um, needed to have the, all these devices put on the race cars in order to be eligible for racing. Um, so instead of, you know, machining something, they wanted the, they, they wanted to make it as light and, uh, aerodynamic as possible so they were able to print the tooling and do a direct layup for this head and neck device extension and have that ready for uh, for the race. See another layup tool for some bracketry that goes on the seat back that this uh, head and neck device extension actually mounts to there on the bottom. Um, one of their next projects they did was the fuel probe assembly. Um, so they realized they were having problems with their old design. It was very cumbersome and, and it was kind of hard to wield into the perfect position in order to begin the refueling process. Um, so their goal was to design a um, more ergonomic uh, and lighter fuel probe assembly so that way it would be easier to flawlessly insert into the fuel port on the race car and, and begin fueling. Um, I know it sounds trivial but you know they often say that when it comes to racing the races are won and lost in the pits so you know, a half a second during a pit stop as you're fumbling with the end of the fuel probe could be the difference between, you know, at the end of the race winning or losing. Um, so here we look at the, the original design. And, um, you know, here was the design that they came up with. Um, this design was released for them at the end of March, and they needed to have uh, five assemblies completed for each of their race teams by May 29th. And they were hoping to have two ready for testing by May 12th. Um, so definitely a short time to produce all these. And, uh, you know, as you look at this design, it's kind of, I, I think this is typical for most, uh, most you know, designers that uh, in certain, certain industries where manufacturing is almost an afterthought. Um, I couldn't think of how you would go about producing this by a traditional means due to its, you know, extremely complex shape and the, uh, the aspects to it. Um, so what they did is turn to um, some of the Stratasys, uh, the Ultem 1010 material and the ST130 in order to produce everything they needed to produce the end piece. So um, what we're seeing here is actually a kind of a tool family. Um, on the right hand side and in the orange here, what we have is the soluble core. That was then wrapped uh, completely in the carbon composite material and then that was uh, um, sandwiched inside an Ultem 1010 mold for the curing process. So what they found actually was a unique advantage uh, kind of by accident is the fact that the sacrificial core here had a higher um, coefficient of thermal expansion than the Ultem 1010 um, layup tool. Uh, during the, cure up, the curing process, the core actually expanded to really help with consolidation and compaction of that composite material within the tool. Um, so here we see the actual um, components, uh, the part on the male portion of the Ultem 1010 tool on top, and then we see the, um, you know, the bottom portion after the sacrificial core has been dissolved out, producing these square channels where the uh, the main arm was mounting there. Um, so here's the all each of the three components shown that were go into this fuel probe assembly, the horseshoe and then the two halves that the uh, aluminum bracket, the machined aluminum bracket plugs into. Um, overall with this design they were able to save almost three quarters of a kilogram over the traditionally uh, designed approach. Um, so here's the side by side comparison on the two. Um, so they were very happy with that and the uh, capability that that Stratasys FDM printers brought to uh, for this application. Um, so really at, at Team Penske what they've, you know, how they describe it is the printer has really allowed them to rethink how they produce the things they produce and whether it's on the race car or the driver itself as we see with this, li or this light, or no, I'm sorry, not the driver, this is for the, the pit crew um, working in dark conditions helping them see or any sort of knobs and vents is in caps. Um, these are extremely lightweight materials, extremely high functional materials, 
and there's no cost for high complexity with these. So um, they're turning to this more and more often to help them um, modify and, and create the most uh, competitive vehicle they can put together. Uh, the next set of examples comes from our friends at NextRev Motorsports. Um, according to James Berlin, their founder, additive manufacturing has allowed them to reduce not only production times, but lap times as well. Um, so this is a company that does a whole bunch of ducting applications we'll look at, but um, here's one example that they did that wasn't ducting related was for aerodynamic improvements, and they made a series of... Um, series of splitters here that they direct printed. You see it on the top portion just above the bumper out of the nylon 12 CF to direct airflow off and over the wheel well so it didn't uh, drag along the side of the car there. Um, it was a complex shape. They were able to produce it very quickly and they needed no tooling whatsoever since it was a directly printed part. Here we see some examples of climate control ducting that they've done. Um, this is, um, you know, the nice part about being able to use printing is we can do complex geometries very, very easily. And once they have some designs for a specific vehicle, I know this company does a lot of the Nissan 350Zs, um, they can easily duplicate that for any of their customers or anyone on their, uh, their racing team. Um, here we see some examples that they have done for, um, this is for brake ducting. So what they did is printed sacrificial cores, wrap that in carbon fiber, and then cure that out. Um, again, this was um, something they were having problems with the rotors getting too hot, so they did this to direct airflow onto the rotor and, and make sure that stays adequately, adequately cool. Um, here's an example of a radiator ducting that was done. Uh, this whole assembly was built out of ASA material in 20 hours. Um, this whole, because this is on the very front of the race car, temp, you know, it's all, it's all cold air blowing in through it. So they were able to print it in ASA. And it includes all of the mounting points for the, uh, the different heat exchangers and the, uh, the radiators that it needs. So it um, fit up in there nice and easily and allowed them to incorporate all of their, uh, their aftermarket cooling systems. Um, this was a defrost dusting or a defrost du ducting that was done on the rear of a 350Z. Um, so one of the challenges with uh, adapting this particular race car to the racetrack is I know it, it was an extremely heavy by you know by race standards the production version. Um, so what they did is pull out all of the factory um, HVAC ducting to eliminate the weight. The only problem was that. Um, that caused an issue where the rear defroster then didn't work and the rear window could art, could become um, fogged up and this is a vehicle that's already known for its low visibility um, as from the driver's perspective and having high, high blind spots. So they were able to put this um, in, in underneath the factory bezel and direct the airflow right onto the, uh, the rear window to help with defrosting. It also, uh, it, the design was based on flow simulation to make sure they had even flow across the entire outlet. And this is capable of ducting gases up to, and air up to uh, 200 C, which is far hotter than any uh, defrost air would ever be. Um, lastly, the, uh, here's another example of a, some interior dash paneling that was all done and printed. So they took the stock interior, and after they had all these, uh, advanced engine management systems and they added in all the extra gauges and controls that they needed for this particular racing application. Um, the stock dash didn't really cut it and didn't provide sufficient room to mount all these systems. Um, so what they did, the engineers at NextRev did is design this entirely custom dash panel to uh, incorporate all the features they want. There's even the plug-in here, um, a USB plug-ins for the data acquisition system, the readout screen for that, um, they incorporated all the factory gauges and then the aftermarket gauges that you see there. Um, so that was a uh, great example for them. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap it up. Um, again, if there's any questions or anything like that that you guys have, uh, I'd be happy to, to hear those. All right, thank you very much, guys, and have a great day. Mm -hmm.